Greetings. Today I'm giving you a realistic look at what I eat in a week featuring some of my current favorite high protein vegan meals that are simple, easy to make, and super tasty, obviously. I wanna show you that getting enough protein on a plant-based diet doesn't have to be stressful, you don't need to chug protein shakes all day, and hopefully I can inspire you to get in the kitchen and get excited about trying some new recipes. Before we dive into the recipes, one really simple thing we've been doing lately has been to swap out our oat milk for higher protein plant milk options in our morning lattes. So for example, I have been making Eric's daily ice latte with a silk protein milk. This is a cashew and almond blend and it's fortified with pea protein. And one cup of this contains 10 grams of plant-based protein, which is even higher than regular dairy milk. Another option is Ripple. It's a pea protein milk too, and we love it, especially their chocolate milk. It's really delicious. We like it for dessert sometimes. And I usually prefer hot drinks in the morning, so I have been rocking with classic soy milk again because I think it froths really well. And depending on the brand, one cup can net you anywhere between five and 10 grams of protein. Now, of course, I hope it goes without saying that if you love your oat milk or almond milk lattes, keep drinking those. Enjoyment is very important, but this is just one simple substitution to consider if you aren't necessarily married to one particular kind of plant milk and you just want an easy way to sneak in some extra protein early on in your day. I think this can also be especially helpful if you're someone who doesn't have much of an appetite early in the morning like myself. So usually I'll drink my soy latte right when I get up just to get something in my system. I'll drink water, then I'll go for a run or do my workout at the gym. And by the time I get home, I have much more of an appetite for real food worked up. And we usually drink our lattes outside because I recently learned on the Huberman Lab podcast that getting exposure to natural daylight first thing in the morning really helps to regulate the circadian rhythm. And it really has made a huge difference for us over the past few months since we've been doing it. So I highly recommend it. So our current go-to high protein breakfast has been these breakfast tacos with just egg and beans. And my secret ingredient are these carb counter tortillas, not because I'm against carbs, but because these actually have some sneaky protein in them. They come in lots of different sizes, but these tiny little street taco tortillas each have three grams of protein. I like to use either seasoned black beans or chili pinto beans for extra flavor without having to mess around with spices, just because I really don't enjoy cooking in the morning. So I just try to keep breakfast simple and easy so I can eat it and start my day. Then you'll also need some just egg and any veggies you like. We always add some spinach to get a serving of greens. And then we'll usually add a little vegan cheese or some avocado if either one of those is on sale that week. So to keep things easy, I will typically just add my beans to my tortillas and pop those in the microwave while I make the scramble. I give the spinach a head start and this is where you would cook any other veggies like bell peppers, mushrooms, or onions if you want those in your breakfast tacos. Then I add in two servings of just egg and I cook until they're set. This does have a tendency to stick quite a bit, so I recommend using a good nonstick pan, especially if you don't want to use any kind of vegan butter or oil. Then I just finish the tacos off with some kind of salsa or hot sauce for extra flavor. Eric usually uses a chipotle salsa, and my current obsession is the Trader Joe's sriracha. So if you run the numbers, two breakfast tacos lands us right around 30 grams of plant-based protein, 12 grams from the Just Egg, 1.3 grams from a cup of spinach, 10.7 grams from the black beans, and six grams from the tortillas. I also prepped a double batch of my baked sesame and panko crusted tofu to eat over the course of a few days. So this was two blocks of tofu that I froze, defrosted, and then pressed. And I like to cut into these cute little triangles, season the tofu with salt and pepper, and then prepare a simple batter with flour and either milk or plain water. I used all purpose flour and some ripple pea protein milk for extra protein. And then the breading is just a combination of panko breadcrumbs and raw sesame seeds. Then we just have the somewhat tedious job of first battering and then breading all of the tofu nuggies. I definitely recommend using one hand to work with the dry stuff and another to work with the wet so that you don't end up breading your fingers. And once you're done, I think a little bit of spray oil helps them to brown nicely in the oven, but it's not strictly necessary. You're just gonna bake these at 425 until they're golden brown and they come out super crispy and the sesame seeds get toasted and they develop this really nice flavor. And these are great just for snacking on with some kind of dip like sweet chili sauce or barbecue sauce. And I also love to top my salads with these. And they're super easy to crisp back up in the air fryer or in the oven the next day. 
Hey friends, I'm gonna take a quick pause to give a big shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Ritual. Ritual is a longtime friend of the channel. I have been taking their women's daily multivitamin since 2018. I love it just for filling in any gaps in my daily nutrition. But recently they came out with a new product called Symbiotic Plus, and this is a three-in-one prebiotic, probiotic, and postbiotic supplement. And I just take one a day to help support my gut, digestive, and immune health. So you may already be familiar with probiotics, but prebiotics actually support the beneficial bacteria in your gut, and then probiotics help support the gut lining. Symbiotic Plus contains two of the most clinically studied strains of probiotics, and they use a delayed release technology that makes sure that the probiotic strains make it all the way, not just to the stomach, but to the colon, which is the actual ideal place for them to grow. Your subscription comes straight to your door every single month with free shipping, and the capsules require no refrigeration, so I actually just keep my multivitamin and my symbiotic together. I take them at the exact same time every day, so I never forget. It is vegan friendly, it's free of all major allergens, and Ritual is always 100% transparent about the sourcing and the environmental impact of all of their ingredients and materials. If you're interested in trying out Ritual, they're currently offering 20% off your first month using my code, which I'll have on the screen. Speaking of salads, here's one that I've been eating a lot lately. It's a crunchy cabbage salad with a creamy Asian-inspired dressing, and it's surprisingly high in protein. At the start of the week, I'll prep the salad base. So I use my food processor to shred up a half a head each of green and red cabbage, and then a bunch of carrots. And I like to add a lot of fresh cilantro, but you could also add mint or some Thai basil instead if you're not a cilantro person. For extra protein, I add in a serving of edamame and then some roasted nuts, something like cashews or almonds. And you can use a store-bought ginger sesame dressing or make your own. So I add soy sauce, rice vinegar, some almond butter, or you could use tahini or peanut butter to make it creamy, some minced ginger and a little bit of minced garlic, some toasted sesame oil, a little bit of lime juice, and some brown sugar. Then just whisk it up and add in some water as needed to get a nice thin pourable consistency and toss your salad mix with that. So this week I am topping that salad with a few pieces of my crispy sesame panko tofu. I just reheat those in my air fryer. It actually takes like under 10 minutes to get them really nice and crispy again. So I added all the ingredients to a nutrition tracker and one serving of the salad without the added tofu already nets you around 11 grams of protein, which is pretty good. Then add one or two servings of that crispy tofu and you're adding seven to 14 grams of extra protein there. Then here is Eric just eating some of that leftover sesame tofu with a vegetable curry. We really love this barbecue sauce. And again, the Trader Joe's sriracha to accompany that. This next recipe is a dessert that I saw on one of Mina Rome's latest videos all about tofu. This is a tofu peanut butter mousse. I have to admit, I was very skeptical going into this, but I wanted to give it a shot. And it has just six ingredients. It calls for a container of soaked tofu, about three quarters of a cup of peanut butter, I would imagine you could make this with any kind of nut butter, some powdered sugar, vanilla extract, a dash of cinnamon, and a pinch of salt. Add it all to a blender and blend until it is completely smooth. Then divide that mixture up between a few jars or really any containers you like and let those chill in the fridge for a few hours or overnight to set. Gonna try the tofu peanut butter mousse pudding dessert. Moise. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited about this. Mmm. Oh, it's delicious. I'm shocked at how much I like it. I was kind of afraid we we're gonna have to throw it all away. Oh no. Because I feel like I've made a dessert using soaked tofu before, but I use like the kind of soaked tofu that comes in the that aren't in the refrigerated section. And I feel like those have a really strong flavor. I don't taste the tofu here. Not at all. It's extremely peanut buttery. It just tastes like peanut butter, really. You could probably make it with almond butter too. Cashew butter, sunflower butter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, to no hint of tofu and the texture is really nice. The consistency is quite nice. I'll give it back, I promise. I was thinking we just got this peanut butter protein granola at Trader Joe's. Mm. This is it. This has 11 grams of protein per serving. So if you wanted to have like an extra peanut buttery kind of parfait situation, you could combine these two. I thought you were gonna say a peanut butter party. Yeah, that a too. Peanut, a peanut butter parfait party. Mm -hmm. I think we're definitely gonna make that again. Yeah. 
how, how can we make it chocolatey? I want to add a little chocolate in there. By adding chocolate. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Another thing I love to meal prep every week is a loaf of homemade vegan deli meat. I just shared a short all about how to make this from scratch and the recipes on the blog. It's way more cost effective than buying tofurkey and it's actually surprisingly easy to make. The main ingredients are extra firm tofu and vital wheat gluten, so it is packed with protein and it's easy to customize with your favorite flavors. Honestly, we love this stuff so much. Sometimes we'll just snack on it as is or we'll make little roll-ups with vegan cheese. I also love making sandwiches or wraps using those carb balance stores Tortillas, but it's also worth noting you can just chop the seitan into cubes and use it in stir fries in place of tofu Or you can shred it and toss it in barbecue sauce to make like a pulled seitan barbecue sandwich It's just a super versatile protein option, but usually we do just slice it up and use it as cold cuts Here is another high protein salad we ate for lunch over the course of the week. It's a kale Caesar with tempeh bacon, crispy chickpeas, and a tahini dressing. It is so good. Step one is to make some crispy chickpeas, which will take the place of croutons in our salad. And the key with these is to thoroughly rinse and dry your chickpeas to help them crisp up and brown nicely in the oven. I keep it simple and I just toss them with olive oil, salt, and pepper. And these take about 45 to 50 minutes in a 425 degree oven. And you just wanna mix them around a few times to make sure they cook evenly. They get super crispy and I find these to be so addictive, I can easily eat a whole can of crispy chickpeas to myself over the course of a day. Want to try some? Whoa. I think good. Have you ever made them this crispy before? It's amazing. It's that trick of letting them dry out on the counter first. Mm. Yeah, they're really good. It's really tasty. We got, I'm gonna stop eating them so you can put them can in the salad. Them. Yeah. <laughs> We're also gonna whip up a batch of my stovetop tempeh bacon to boost the protein in this salad. Check out the blog or my previous video featuring four high protein meals for more about this recipe. The only thing I did different this time was to chop the tempeh into little bits so it would be easier to get some in every single bite of the salad. Kale is probably one of my favorite vegetables and when I use it in salad, I always like to massage it with some fresh lemon juice, a pinch of salt and a drizzle of olive oil and massage it for a few minutes. It shrinks a lot in volume and it gets dark and glossy and this helps to tenderize it and remove some of its natural bitterness. Then I also made a simple vegan tahini based Caesar dressing with a quarter cup of runny tahini, some lemon juice, some crushed capers and a splash of the brine from the capers in place of traditional anchovies, some Dijon mustard, a teaspoon of white miso paste to take kind of the place of the Parmesan in traditional Caesar, a clove of minced garlic, fresh black pepper, and then just add enough water to thin the dressing out to a pourable consistency. To assemble the salad, just toss together the massaged kale with the tahini dressing and the tempeh bacon. I think some fresh sliced tomato makes a really nice addition to this too if you have some. Then save the roasted chickpeas for last so that they stay crispy in the salad. When I plug all the ingredients into a nutrition tracker, one serving of the salad contains just under 20 grams of protein. That's good. It's really good. If you don't like kale, you're eating it wrong. Massage it. So many people have said on our videos in the past, you lost me at kale, kale's gross. I don't think I liked kale either until you started cooking for me. Massaging it helps remove the bitterness. It tenderizes it. Even when I'm putting a dressing on, like with the Caesar salad, I still massage it first. It makes a difference. Mm -hmm. I love salads that have like so many things in it. Obviously I tried the chickpeas by themselves and I've had the tempeh many times. It all really works together. I mean, obviously it works together. We knew it was gonna work. You're addicted to those. They're so good. I'm ready for like true salad season. Mm -hmm. Like warm weather, sunny salad season. Only four more months here in PNW. Next up, we made a high protein vegan mac and cheese with the white bean cheese sauce from the blog. I actually had Eric make this for me because my period started and I was getting uh, mad cramps. So thank you, Eric, Eric to the rescue. You need a can of white beans. We use cannellini beans, some nutritional yeast for a cheesy flavor, half a cup of cashews soaked or boiled, some cooked carrots, mostly for color, onion powder, garlic powder, and some smoked paprika, juice of half of a lemon, a little bit of miso paste, some full fat coconut milk to make it rich and creamy, then some salt and blend it all up until it's smooth. 
Then we cooked up some of this Protein Plus pasta. I really like this because it does have extra protein in it. It's 10 grams of protein per serving, but it's not a fully gluten-free pasta. It's not made like entirely of chickpeas. So it still has a really nice texture. It's not mushy or gritty. Honestly, it tastes very similar to regular pasta to me. So we boiled that up. Cheese sauce recipe makes a big batch and we use maybe half of it with half a box of the pasta. We save the rest of the sauce for later to use as a dip. I really like adding pickled jalapenos and chopped tomatoes and a few spices to turn this into like a nacho cheese sauce. A roughly one half cup serving of the cheese sauce served with one serving of the protein plus pasta lands us at just about 16 grams of protein. That isn't quite as high as some of the other meals we featured in this video, but I think compared to a regular vegan mac and cheese, it's pretty good. It's basically just like the regular vegan mac that you make. And that wraps up this week of high protein vegan meals. Thank you so much for watching. I would love for you to subscribe if you found this video helpful. And if you haven't already, check out my previous video with four more high protein vegan recipes that I make all the time, or check out my video about easy high protein vegan meal prep. Love you guys so much, and I will see you in my next video.